I think he gets the, puts the passcode in because it was a four digit passcode before and it was a six digit this one this time. So and now like, like 013119. Yeah. She knew her friend's passcode? Yeah, I didn't. Because it used to be 2385, but when she changed it to six. Why did Nikki know it? Maybe she knew it over the weekend because I'd never seen a six digit passcode on her on her phone. Is that normal to you that Nicole might share her passcode with somebody? I wouldn't think so. Has, do you know her to have done that before? No, because only she's only told me her passcode before. Like her, I mean, her phones are lifeline, so. Okay. Are she close with Nicole? I mean, uh, she's, I mean, decently close. How long do they know each other? Probably, probably at least over a year. How did they meet? Uh, when her mom, when Shanann's mom lived here, they, uh, her Shanann's mom worked at a, she's a hairdresser, and Nikki was like one of the managers. Oh, Nicole, sorry, one of the managers. And then does she, did Shanann get her hair done there or something by Nikki? No. Okay. I was just Shanann's mom and Nicole were friends, and then Shanann got Nicole into the thrives, and oh, okay, went from there. All right. So now we're at finding the phone. Nicole unlocking the phone, then what? Waiting for the everything to load up and watching all the text messages pop up, phone calls, pop, missed calls pop up, and go from there. And what were they? It was just people call, asking, asking, like, are you okay? Where are you? Type things. Okay. All right. Um, okay, then what? The police officer he looks at the phone, just kind of he just kind of look, looks through it to see like if anything looks you know on up any of the text messages, mm -hmm. and then um I walk downstairs and I'm looking around down there seeing if I see anything at all. Okay. I don't, I mean nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And then um I think that was at and at four o'clock that's when um because the neighbor because the neighbor I was the officer I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And who that he was at? I think it was the officer. Cause okay. He just went over there. Um, okay. And then that's when the uh, neighbor called him back over to show him he um, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay. Just show him like whatever he had and that, that put motion on it. Okay. Who originally called the police? Uh, Nicole. Okay. And is that the time when you were telling me you're coming home and she's freaking out? She said that. She told me she was going to call the police, but I thought, okay, I'm coming home. It's like, let me let, let me look through everything. Let's see what's going on here. And I, on my way home, I, that's when she called me and said, the cops are here. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Frederick Police Officer and Detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone, who she could be with. 4 p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that where we're, mm -hmm. okay. where we're at? Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up okay. about the time that told you I left. Okay. Officer, detective, and sergeant come by to search the house and ask some more questions. How'd that go? They just uh, had me sign the paperwork to search the house. Okay. And I just waited outside and let them okay. go through the house to this missing person's warrant, I guess. Sure. Okay. And did they find any other clues? Okay. Um, begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shanann. Calling locals, hospitals, and hospitals as well. 7.30 p.m. Friends, Nick and Amanda come by to show support. Okay, so I might begin good. So 6 p.m. Begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shanann. What happened there? Same thing, like everybody that I've talked to, it's just like they haven't heard from her, they haven't seen her, they nothing. Call the hop, what's up? Who's helping you make these calls? That's just me, just at this point. That's were you by yourself? I was by myself. I'm sure Nicole and other people were doing that while they were gone. Okay. Because they were gone at this point. Where did Nicole go? Back to her house. Back to her house. She was there when they came back to search the house. Nicole was? She was parked outside. When? Is this 5 o'clock? Yeah. She was parked outside. Did she come in and help them? No. Why not? Well, because they told me to wait outside. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Is there any weapons in your house? No. Okay. Um, if we wanted to bring a lot more people with a lot more tools and tricks to your house, um, could we do that tonight? It's up to you. Okay. 
Um, I was going to stay at a friend's house and I was, I was on my way over there. Okay. Tonight, but that's up to you. You're going to stay at a friend's house? I was. Okay. If we were to get into your house without you there, how would we do it? Punch the passcode in the front, 2385. Okay. And that's the garage passcode? No, that's the front door. And it, I thought you said it was a latch or something preventing you from getting in. I know, but if you don't latch it, it's. Is that latch now? Yeah. Okay. Um, we might think about that. I think it's a good idea. All right. What do you think? I was just going to go to a friend's house because I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there last night. I couldn't even sleep there. Who put friend's house? Uh, Nick and Amanda. Oh, is that her friends or your friends? They're both of our friends. Okay. I run with Nick. Okay. And we say hers. Is that your wife or is that Nicole's? My wife. Your wife's. Yeah. She's Nan's friends. Yeah. Okay. Nick and Amanda. Um, I think they're waiting outside right now. Actually. Oh, are they? <laughs> Were they the ones I saw on TV? More than likely. Okay. Um, one bald guy. Young young kid with a brim ball cap. Yeah. Colorado or something, yeah. maybe? That's Nick. Nick. That was Nick? Okay. I thought Nick was... No, wait, Nicole's son's Nicole's son. Nick. So there's two Nicks now? Yeah. Okay, so Nicole's son is Nick. Yeah. And your friend is Amanda. Who Amanda else? and Nick. Yeah. Are they married? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, gosh, I'll say like a Nick and Amanda Thayer. Put it that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I know the Thayer name. They showed up at the house at some point, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Good friends. Mm-hmm. And no reason to worry about them. No. How do you and the, how do you and Shanann know them? The Amanda through Thrive, or actually Amanda was at Primrose at the at where the kids went to school. Okay. She used to be director there. Oh. And once she left as once she didn't once she left as a director position when she left to go to a different school that's when Shanann got her on Thrive and became friends and okay. me and Nick started running. And okay. That's Okay. Was she the one watching the kids the night before? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I saw her name in a report or something. Um, how did that go with Dave and Jeremy? Oh, good. They're just you know just there just to show support, just you know chill in the kitchen. Just two of them. And then us, me, yeah, me, and them. And Lauren and all them had gone by then. Oh yeah, everybody else had gone by then. Okay. Um, when they come over to show support, um, what are you guys talking about? Just talking just about like what could have happened. Like, do you think she, do you think she could have gone somewhere? Do you think she's actually taken? Like, what like just random questions like that. Just and then they're just talking about just other stuff to get my to kind of get things off my head a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, Ten o'clock. I lay in bed and proceed to take calls from friends and family the rest of the night. How did I go? And just answering. I'm, nobody can sleep as far as East Coast. Anything like you know, Addy, Sam. Who's Addy and Sam again? Addy, most uh, they're leaders and thrive. Okay. They're people that Shannon thought reaches up to. Okay. Have we talked to them? Oh yeah, we talked to them on the phone. You have. I've talked to, yeah, I've texted them that okay. there's it's all on there. Okay. And so the real live communication since we couldn't find you in. Yeah, like them. Okay. Have police talked to them? I believe so. Okay. And just on the phone? Yes. Are they in North Carolina? No, they're like yeah. northeast. Northeast what? Like uh, Baltimore. Oh, or, okay. yeah, over right. there. All right. Who else calls? Let's see her mom. Talked to my parents, talked to my sister, talked to, uh, texted with Kelly, that's another, she that lives in New Jersey. Oh, who else? Jeremy, Dave, so, all those people. Okay. All right. Um, can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about? Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. And part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage. And the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay. So you can understand yeah. what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. Like I know, like. I've talked to a few of my friends, it's like, you know, this does not look good on you. I'm like, I know. It's like, people that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're going to look at me, especially with the way everything looks. And it honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. Ever. I, I know, like, you have to look at every, every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife at all. I'm not sure like what I could do to like to make people believe that just because if they if they knew were having marital discord, they would all automatically look at me. But there's no I would harm anybody in my family. At all. I know we were having marital discord and we had that conversation that morning and then she goes, we have no idea where she is or the kids. I promise you that no, no, I had nothing to do with any of that. Are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you. Why should I believe you? Because I'm a very trustworthy person, and the people that do know me, they know how I'm a calm person. I am not an argumentative person. I am a person who is that's never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I would never harm my kids. I would never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. They know me. They know. I'm a low-key guy that's quiet. So I'm, I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level. I mean, like, if someone like yells at me, screams at me, 
I just take it and I'm just, I just try to get it by the wayside and get it back to where it's a cool, a, just a cool conversation to where like none of that, none of that gets to that height. Because I am not that person. I've never been that person.
have everyone else. Um, I'm just going to keep the turn for a little bit longer. So just shuffle people through the other rooms.
children go missing in the FBI, it's a lot like you see in the movies. Okay. We like to get every single one of our recent resources. We like to call every agent and wake them up out of bed, call them back from vacation. We just really like to put a full force in. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're comfortable supporting? Yeah. Okay. That means that I want to have as many eyes, as many hands, as many investigators, as many evidence people as we can possibly get looking at your house. Okay. Can we do that right this minute? To okay. Pop it out of the way if you want. Okay. Um, that's usually best. For you, for us, yeah. for everyone. Okay. Can you show me to stay at my friend's house then? Um, is that an option? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not sure if it's still outside. Okay. I'm not sure or not. Cause All right. I don't have a phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to ask you about your phone. Yeah. Uh, I don't have much to say. I have to here anyways. Okay. But um, concrete block. So what I might do then is in, I don't know, five, ten minutes, I might just step out for a very quick break and just say, guys, Let's go in that house right now. Um, 2385. You did tell me that, and I did write it. The garage is 2385? The front door. The front door, 2385, and that latch or whatever is not going to get in our way? It, okay. uh, it should be unlatched. Okay, good. All right. If um, it is, just call me. Now, when you go in there, I want them to run a black light over everything. I want them to have to collect DNA. I want them to look for hair strands and DNA samples and I want them to look at your stuff and your wife's stuff and your children's stuff and the garage stuff and the car stuff, all of it. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any problems with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then I want them to do that sooner than later. I might step out here in a minute and just tell them the code and just let them know, guys, let's find how we can get these girls. Okay. Um, Can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are going to make you uncomfortable? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and I think you know why I have to ask them. Yeah. Okay. And it's a hard job. It's a hard job. It is a hard job. And I'm going to ask you one thing, and you're going to give me an answer, and I'm going to ask it just a slight bit, bit different, and you're going to give me an answer. And then about 10 iterations of this, you might get annoyed, but I do that to make sure that we understand each other. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we have your daughter's who are missing, we have your wife who's missing, okay, and that's the most important thing right now, okay. Um, do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, you've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had, okay. Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my my marriage argument okay so I got to say you've done very good at that um, and I need you to keep doing that so I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity okay okay tell me about it now, I have never cheated on my wife okay and I fully suspect she has never done that to me oh okay like She's always been a trustworthy person. I've always been a trustworthy person. I fully expect if we ever thought about straying another way, mm -hmm. that we would tell each other before it happened. I think that sounds ridiculous. Okay. Because in the history of the earth, nobody ever does that. Okay. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, that's what I would like to think. Okay. I mean, I mean, I know mistakes happen. Like, sure. You know. Yeah. But. That's what I would, in my head, that's what I would okay. think would happen, I would hope would happen. Okay. But now, even though I think that sounds ridiculous, mm -hmm. if I was in your shoes, I'd say the exact same thing. And, and I believe that. Okay. okay. But I kind of don't. And you can imagine in my job, I meet all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that there are people who have Saturdays with their girlfriends and Sundays with their wives. Okay. Right? And they consider themselves to be very virtuous people. Okay. So, with that in mind, I don't care if there's been anything in your relationship. I just don't. Uh, and I'm not going to tell the news and I'm not going to tell anyone, but I do need to know. Uh, so, is there anyone that you think that maybe your wife got close with? If she did, it was very like secret then if that was the case, because okay. I, I had no inkling no at idea. all. No, okay. it, it wasn't even a sus suspicion. Okay, not one guy. Or girl. No, 
if, if, if that was the case, I mean, I didn't have one suspicion about it. Like, if, if, if it happened, it wasn't even like, I wasn't aware. Nothing there was no clue. There was no, like, okay. you know, texting with the phone, like, back or, like, you know, I walk in, swipe type yeah. thing. I, I didn't really have any of that. Okay. No perfume when she's going out with the girls. She always smells, she always sprays something you on know us. That I mean, yeah, I know, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, like that one in a million perfume or something okay. like that, you know. All right. No late nights that surprised you. No. Okay. Now let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. Um, on your end, I gotta ask, what's, what's, her, what's her name? <laughs> I don't have another one. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Would you tell me if you did? Yes. Okay. Um, so, again, highly trained investigator over here, right? I see pictures of you from a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I see you standing before me now. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, you've gotten pretty fit. Yeah. Okay. You can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes. So tell me about it. So I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. Not thrive, help me. I went from 245 pounds to about 245. About 245 Jeez. pounds. And I'm great, man. Thank you. And I'm 185, 180 right now. Mm -hmm. And I've been eating cleaner, just trying to the last last little bit. Thrive has helped me a lot, but to maintain it and try to eat cleaner has really helped me as well. Okay. And I've got to imagine that maybe there was a girl that inspired that. No. 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 Okay. Why are you falling out of love? After the last five, the last five weeks, like being by myself and being able to be myself again, I couldn't be myself around Janet anymore. Why not? It was like I was walking, just like, if, like you know, like walk on eggshells type thing. It's kind of like you don't, you feel like you're always doing something that's wrong. It's like you, you feel like you're never like. Doesn't make does that make sense at all? The timing doesn't make sense to me. Okay. But like, it's like, like if you can't be yourself around your wife, who can you be yourself around? Why couldn't you be yourself around your wife? I just felt like I'd always have to change who I was because I, I was always about, I mean, I was doing the laundry, I do, I do everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I do everything that I could for her. Everything. Mm -hmm. And then like the last five weeks, I just like, I was just, you know, just being myself, just doing me. And I just thought to myself like, one of my buddies, Mark, he lives out in San Diego, it was like one big test that he learned, like he, he was divorced at one point, and he was like, so if you could picture yourself, like if you could picture your wife and she was with someone else, would you get jealous? I was like, at this point I have to say no. And he was like, well, there's your answer. Like if you love her, it would be a different answer. When did you start pulling out? It, ha it, it wasn't in the last five weeks. It's been an ongoing process for probably about a year. Why? I just felt like everything that we had when we first started dating and met, like we met in 2010, everything, you know, your new relationship, spark, everything hot, have everything's great. Get married, everything's still great. And then like, you know, people just fall out of love. And that's, that's where I was. Like, I just felt like over the last year, I thought that like, okay, maybe maybe this is just like a phase. Maybe it's you know, like just you know, this is what happened, like you've been with somebody so long. Maybe like, you know, the spark into there just reunited somehow, some way. But, you know, our conversations weren't the same, like when we were apart, like everything was just like, you know, short and it was just like it nothing felt right anymore. The disconnection was there and it just never felt right anymore. But why? <laughs> it wasn't better. Like, I just didn't feel it, like, it was like I didn't have that passion anymore. Why not? I, I, I really couldn't, I can't tell you, like, it, the passion, I, I didn't feel it in my heart anymore. Like, I really, I really can't, like, just give you a definitive answer other than that. It's like my heart wasn't in it. I gotta tell you, that sounds like a load of horseshit, uh, mate. Um, I know. What about the girls? Bella and Celeste are the light of my life. I'd do anything for those girls. I'd step in front of a bullet so I'd put train for those girls. It doesn't add up to me, then why did the spark die? 
the rest of the relationship between me and Shanann has nothing to do with the love I have for these girls. I mean, the love for these girls, these, I mean, they're the light of my life. I would do anything for them. Mm -hmm. But me and Shanann talked about, like, if we separated or if we stayed together, like, what's best for the kids? Like, do we stay together for the kids? That you look it up, it doesn't work that way. Like, it might cause more issues for the kids later on down the road with their psyche or personality or something. They know when they can, they get older, they see like, oh, mom and dad don't sleep in the same room anymore. Like, what's going on? Type thing. Okay. If you had to guess, if you had to put your finger on it, if you had to, you know, why do two people that are hot and heavy that have kids that they love, what happens? I mean, you can't take the kids into the fact into the factor because, like, when the love you have for your kids is going to be like exponential. I mean, it, it'll no matter what, that will never die because mm -hmm. those are your kids. Mm -hmm. That'll never die. Between you and your wife, like, the love that you have for each other, like, from start to finish, like, from right when you started to where you're in your, if your relationship ends, like, some like. When you're in that type of relationship, you're with somebody for that long, something happens. Like something like if it's just conversations or if it's just like, you know, I mean it's not attractiveness at all, like it's just a connection that isn't there. Like you know when you can like look at someone and or just like put your forehead to their forehead and you just like hold them and you know what each other's thinking, that's a connection. I didn't have that connection anymore. I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me that when I tell you that these two beautiful girls right here, I did nothing to them and to my beautiful wife, I did nothing to her. Like, you have to trust me and believe me. Like, I know you don't know me as a person, you, you've known me for like two and a half, three hours, mm -hmm. and I don't know what your opinion is. But you have to realize that these two beautiful girls right here and my wife, I had nothing to do with the disappearance. Like, they vanished. They were taken. Someone take, has taken them. They're safe somewhere. We don't know. I had nothing to do with, these, with, this, with this act of, like, evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. Because my love for these two girls and my wife, like, I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. No matter if me and my wife separate or not, or divorce or anything, I never wish harm on anybody, on a human being in general. Okay. Like, just seeing that picture, like, I need them, I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me, mm -hmm. or just barrel, just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head up, I don't care. The amount of love I have for my family is exponential, and I, it's never going to die. Okay. And they need. I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. sunscreen, 
make sure that all that in their backpacks. Change your clothes for what? In case you have an accident. Like, oh, okay. Because they're little. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And not much Bella, but Celeste. Sure. Um, and make sure they have their little blankies if they, whenever they go nap. Okay. They have all that with them. I have that all laid out, and then I go to work. Mm-hmm. So when Jeanette, well, the kids dictate when Jeanette wakes up, and usually, usually it's Bella. She'll come in there, lay in the bed with her, and then Celeste, she'll wake up. They'll just come in and lay in the bed with her, and they'll watch cartoons for for a little while at least. Mm-hmm. And probably about 6:30, they'll get up. They'll Jeanette will, well, she'll probably be in the bathroom at this point in time while they're watching because she, Celeste has her milk at that point in time and she's just chilling in the bed. Okay. Jeanette's getting ready. She'll probably take a shower, put makeup on, all that kind of stuff, and then takes the kids over into their rooms, gets them dressed, out of pajamas, and their Bella, Bella has a school uniform. CC didn't have one yet. Okay. So um, get them dressed. Um, Go downstairs, have breakfast. CC will probably have cereal, Bella, probably uh, some like cinnamon toast. Mm-hmm. Um, have that. They may have, might have a little snack on the way to school, maybe some dry cereal or something. Okay. Just gonna put them in the cars and go to school. Mm-hmm. And then they'll stay at school usually until about 4 o'clock, 4.30. I'll usually be home by then. I can go pick them up. I go in there, sign them out, get them in the car, drive back. They'll be screaming the whole way because they want mommy. Mm-hmm. Cause that's what they do after a long day of school. Mm-hmm. And get home. Shannon will have something for the girls, being whatever they want. Either it might be pizza. Sometimes they want French fries. Sometimes they want chicken nuggets. Sometimes kibasi. Just like just whatever. Most of them, that butter noodles. They love that. Okay. So sit them at the, wash their hands. Sit them at the table, and they'll eat their dinner. And then usually go upstairs, take a shower with them. 